after looking at the uh, wiring and so forth on this thing, I decided I'd just scrap the old panel and just go ahead and make a new one. Uh, the difference being that all the gauges will be on this just this one panel. I drilled holes here to put uh, 632 screws into a curved piece of 4130 that that kind of forms the airframe of that fuselage. Uh, this is the altimeter I found out that uh, pushing this button down here uh, you can set it of course it's a it's a digital a digital altimeter uh, so it would be 1650 feet there's what it's set at now and then if one battery goes dead you'd flip it over it runs on two nine volt batteries so you got A and B batteries, so if one battery went dead, you could still flip it over and run it on the other one. Uh, this is my airspeed, RPM, this is a little hour meter that I found in there. Uh, I'm going to have cylinder head temperature and exhaust gas temperature here. The fuel gauge here, and this is going to be a big idiot light that's going to come on if I'm running a fuel pump to transfer fuel into the five gallon tank. Uh, there will be an electric fuel pump and of course my slip indicator there and I did put a cigarette outlet in here because most of the time if you want to run a radio or a GPS you kind of need that. The next thing that I've uh, changed here is this is going to be the choke lever to shut down that'll choke the engine ignition switch will be right here if you flip it up it runs if you flip it down, that's a kill switch. It'll stop everything. This right here will full start the fuel transfer pump to transfer fuel. That'll be on the side of the of the seat. That's what you're looking at there. This is the seat. Currently, I'm working on all these wires here to find out what does what and where they come out. And as you can see, I'm putting a paint coat on them so I know what they do. Uh, to check these things, I usually just use a test light like this so that you know when I find the right wire, this light bulb will light up. Oop, gotta get that on the camera. There we go. This light bulb will light up just by touching this probe to something. Uh, it's just a simple circuit tester, and that's how I find out what wire in the back comes out where here because there's a lot of EGT probes here. Uh, these temperature probes because there's so many of them I need to sort the wires and know which one goes where. I noticed that the previous owner has put a, uh, a sort of a plug in here. Uh, let's see if you can see it. This thing here is what I'm talking about. So that these can be quickly disconnected you'll be able to remove the whole panel rather quickly to take it off of there. And uh, the purpose of the red light on the panel will be if this switch is pulled out and you're transferring fuel that light will be on to tell you that because you don't want to forget about that otherwise you'll be pumping fuel overboard and you don't want to do that. The seat I repaired a lot of the cracks in the fiberglass added more fiberglass here on the sides to strengthen the seat just layered it on there put some places a couple layers on there so it's pretty thick and pretty strong now uh, I also added this foam, which is really what it is, is an anti-fatigue mat. It's kind of a, a soft uh, foam mat that you'd stand on. I used to have it in front of the rubber press down there. But I decided, well, I'll use that to put on here to give me a little extra cushioning because uh, I'm getting old and I need a little bit more cushion on my seat. Uh, glued it on there using uh, indoor-outdoor uh, carpet adhesive, you get it cheap over at Lowe's, it doesn't cost that much, maybe four or five bucks for a big can like that. Put it on with a putty knife, uh, very sticky stuff. Once it starts to set, it's kind of a contact cement, once it starts to set, you push it together and it, it has a good holding power, it'll, it'll stay that way. And then once it does get to totally dry, when it's uh, wet, you can wash it off with a little bit of water, soap and water will take it off your hands but once it's dry, uh, well, gasoline will soften it up. You can put gasoline on or a wet gasoline rag and 
you can eventually soften it enough that you might be able to pull something loose with it. But it's pretty sticky stuff and very economical to use. What I'm doing here is gluing this fabric on here, which uh, I put on the top. I, I've got like a thicker, they call it a medium weight fabric I, up here on top. And then down uh, on the back here, this side, this is what they call ultralight fabric. And I don't glue it on these bars here until after I shrink it a little bit. Then you can put some glue on there. But right now I'm going to shrink the whole thing as one big network. Because if I glued it down to this bar, uh, for one thing you'd have these wrinkles in it when you were trying to glue it. And you know you could do that and then shrink each panel, but I'm doing it where I'm going to shrink the whole thing tight, and then after it pulls tight on these bars, uh, then you take a little bit of glue, like like down here at the bottom at this edge, what I'm doing, and you can rub it and it'll go right through the fabric. Put a little bit of glue on there. And it'll, it'll go right through that fabric. And I just rub it with my finger a little bit. But I'm going to do that after I shrink it for the bars down there. But the way I'm doing this is kind of slow because I'm not using clamps and things like that. I'm just kind of going along the edges, gluing it and trimming as I go. Uh, mostly because this is kind of intricate back here. There's so many things to go around, the landing gear and stuff. And one of the problems I got, of course, is here. I had to drill out these rivets and put the fabric through here and wrap it around that tube uh, to glue it down. So it's kind of slow and tedious. It ain't, it's not like doing a wing, that's for sure. A wing goes pretty fast compared to this. But, uh, but that's what I do is I rub the glue through the... Now, I do paint the tubes with some glue before I even started putting the fabric on there. I put glue on the tubes and let it dry on there because when you go and put some on top of the fabric and it goes through there, uh, through the fabric, it'll kind of soften the, the glue that I've already painted on there, and so that it'll get sticky real fast. And it'll, when you rub that with some glue through the fabric, it's going to stick down real easy then. So, uh, but what I'm doing is just gluing along this lower edge. Then I'll get scissors and trim this off, and then there's what they call finishing tape that goes on there that'll to go over the seam and over this tube to make a nice neat edge along here. But this fabric here, I'll just take scissors and go along here and kind of roughly trim it, oh, maybe maybe a half inch or three quarter inch away from this tube and put glue on there on, and roll it under the bottom. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm not needing to put new fabric on the bottom under here, so that piece I'm going to leave. But, uh, but you'll see it shrink eventually. And that's kind of when the magic happens. But uh, well, <clears throat> I should maybe point out some of the things here because someday somebody might want to look and see how this is hooked up because it's kind of hard to see back here. This is the fuel transfer hose here that goes to this uh, little uh, fuel pump here. It's an electric fuel pump. Uh, the hose here on the bottom, if you can see, it's not hooked to anything right now, but that can be fed to a different tank to refill this in flight uh, if, you, if you should need to ferry this someplace or something. This is the filler neck here. It's going to fill my gas tank here. This is going to be the fuel uh, pickup tube. There's a, a metal tube that goes down to the bottom of this tank. That's going to go up to the engine, to the fuel pump on the engine. Uh, this is the ballistic chute here. Uh, the fuel tank, the, the fuel tank itself has a gauge sender and some kind of resistance measuring thing, so it has a, you know, a gas gauge on this thing. So uh, not only can you look in through this tank to see how much fuel's in there, but this is the coupling where that's hooked together. Then the wires go up to the front to the panel where the fuel gauge is. But there are just three wires that do that. This on top is a big vent into the fuel tank. It kind of goes up high here and then goes down and out the bottom. Uh, the reason for such a big vent is because when you're refilling this with fuel, 
Uh, I don't want to really pressurize this tank. I want uh, I want to make sure the air can get out of there real easy when I'm transferring fuel into it because the fuel is going to be coming in there and the air needs a way to get out and a little little pinhole isn't going to make it so I put this bigger tube on there. I also might put a T-fitting in there to hook to a vent on the fuel tank I put in. If I put an extra ferry tank or something in there, I want to have a vent on that so I don't get gas fumes in the in the back end because you know these things get hot inside when they sit in the sun. So I thought I'd show that before I cover this side as to exactly what's in there. The gas tank's held down with these hooks. There's four hooks around it to uh, nylon straps with quick disconnects. You can pull this tank out pretty easy. Uh, it comes out uh, through the inside of the fuselage after this is all covered. You can't get it out. Uh, I think if you wanted to get this chute out of here, that's going to have to come out through the top or uh, take it loose and put it through inside. That's how I got it in there. I put it inside and then up and it's held with clamps uh, here on some metal brackets which I put a lot of lightning holes in there because they were just solid and I couldn't see any reason for so much weight there. I'm sure there's some kind of recoil when this rocket goes off but uh, that thing was kind of crazy how they had that hooked up. So anyways uh, I think it's about ready to cover now. I'll put the covering on the side if you ever do need to get to this fuel pump or change the fuel lines or something, uh, I think you can reach back in there if you take this fuel tank out. You're going to need long arms and you'll probably get a sore back doing it, but you can get to this fuel pump. Now, I, what I've done is I've glued, put glued along all the outer edges on the fabric and wrapped this edge. I trimmed it off, oh, maybe this inch or so hanging down. Folded that over the bottom. There'll be a piece of trim tape go over that. And uh, I've started shrinking this fabric. You can see the wrinkles in the fabric and stuff. But you just use an iron and you go along and look how fast the wrinkles just, they just pull right out of there, you see. This is what you call shrinking it tight. It really wasn't on there very tight to start with, but it'll shrink up when you put that hot iron against it. And that's how I get rid of the of the wrinkles and tighten up the fabric and make it taut. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You'll see places that need shrunk more. You can just keep going over the iron. Uh, I have another iron here for doing small places. That seems to work too. But this is uh, just an old regular iron. That's what I'm using. After I shrink it all tight on the edges, it pulls up tight. And then since I've already put some glue, which is dried, on these uh, rib members and so forth in here, then I get a little bit of glue on my finger. And I just go along there and rub it like that. Well, that glue will go through the fabric and it's going to bond the, the uh, fabric to that rib real good. Uh, you wouldn't maybe necessarily have to do that. It's, it's good if you were having the wings or something like that on this fuselage. Maybe it doesn't make any difference, but I figure uh, any place I can get it anchored uh, is probably a good idea. It's only there. Using your fingers probably isn't the best way to do that. There's probably some tool that's real good on this, but I usually just use my fingers. And the glue will go through the weave of the fabric and stick it on there. Uh, here in the back, uh, I put a piece of the trim tape around the, the where the pieces of fabric come together. This is the tape that I put on here to wrap around. It just comes in a roll. Wrap that on there, and uh, so now I think I'm about ready to paint this thing. I got